Hello, and welcome to Psychology Demystified. February's almost done. Some of us turned a year older on Sunday. Nope, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. And one thing that I decided to do this time was to do a well-being checklist, just to do a self-check-in to see how I'm doing. So I figured, if I'm going to do it, why not take you along with me so we can do it together? So let's do a well-being checklist today and see how we're doing. The number one question I'm asking myself today is, what is my sleep like? Some people need six to seven hours of good sleep to feel relaxed and ready for the next day. There are exceptions, of course. Some people need less, some people need more, but these are not that many. I'm pretty much one of those people who kind of sometimes needs a little more sleep because I'm just like a cat. I just love sleep. Some of the things on my checklist that I need to be more aware of are trying not to have a very heavy meal before going to bed, trying not to do too many active things before going to bed, like exercise, which really, quite honestly, since it's me, I don't have to worry about that because that is not happening. But some of you like to exercise before bed, so maybe it's time to relax on that just a little bit because then you are really, really, really awake. And the other thing is trying to stay away from the screen for about two hours before sleeping. This one is my Achilles heel because sometimes I like to sleep with the TV on because I need background noise. Sometimes I fall asleep to a movie. It's going to be a conscious effort to try and do that, to disconnect from a screen. But you know what? If you're like me, Let's try it. We have nothing to lose. Let's try putting away our screens two hours before we go to sleep and see whether we survive. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. The other thing I know I need to ask myself is what is my digestion like? Sometimes I find that I end up eating in a hurry because I'm between one session and another and I need to do A, B and C before I start the next thing. And I end up wolfing down my food or doing it while I'm walking around and doing other things at the same time. I know for a fact that that is not good for my digestion. So I know that there's some things that I need to work on where I need to take some time to sit and chew my food so that I can digest it properly. So I have to make a conscious effort to do this. And this has to become part of my checklist. And I also know that I need to follow the 80 20 rule. No, not the one from Hitch not that one, the 80-20 rule when it comes to food, which means 80% of the time I need to learn how to eat things that are good for me and good for my gut, and then 20% of the time I can go nuts with all the sugar I want because that is my thing. Some people are not sugar maniacs, but for me that gives me a feel-good factor. So as long as I can balance the 80-20, then I think I'm doing something good for myself and for my well-being. The third thing on my well-being checklist is doing a self-check-in and asking myself, how much do I really drink? No, not alcohol. How hydrated are you in terms of water? That said, though, and having clarified that I mean water, at the same time, there also needs to be a check-in, a self-check-in on how much alcohol do you consume? Keeping a fine balance between how much water I drink and how much other stuff I drink, I think I'll manage to balance my system in some way where I limit the number of good time drinks that I have versus water and see what that does for my skin. I hear a lot of people talking about how that's great for their skin and all of that. So, hey, I mean, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to start drinking more water. So that's my check-in. I don't know about you, but if you're not a water fan like I am, Maybe you could start, like me, by throwing in some lemons and seeing whether that adds some kind of taste or flavor to it. If that doesn't work, what do you use to make your water taste better? Because I need something. So please add that in the description box. I need some ideas because water for me is kind of meh. So help, help, help me do my wellness check-in. The next thing on my list is how do I feel about myself? This is where I take a long, hard look at myself and think, do I like the things I'm doing? 
Do I like myself? Do I like the things I do both inside and outside my home? This is where I become my own best cheerleader. When something goes well, I treat myself. When something doesn't go as well, I'm kind to myself and I say that I'm going to do it better the next time. And I also try and find the positive parts of things as opposed to dwelling on the negative. And in the same breath, I also check in to see, do I need help? And if I do, then my role for my own wellness check-in is to ask for help. This next one is really big for someone like me. And this one is where I do a self-reflection of how fast am I going? How fast am I moving? When we're under stress, our body naturally speeds up. That's just how people are wired. Unfortunately, what this also does, it tells your body and your brain that there's a threat. Initially, you'll find that you're able to respond really fast. But with time, you'll start to find that your speed is leading to stress and to anxiety. As I say this, I'm also speaking to myself, where I tell myself, and you, maybe, slow down and assess the situation. Because I find that sometimes I don't take time to slow down before trying to think of a different solution to things. As I do this checklist, I also need to be very conscious of the fact that sometimes my list may be too long. Sometimes my goals may be a bit too large for that specific time frame, and I need to take a step back. Otherwise, I am always chasing and chasing and chasing, and I never have time to sit down and appreciate things. In simple words, as part of my self-check-in that I need to do very consciously, I need to learn to be able to prioritize, to be realistic, and to just learn to let the rest go. Is it going to be easy? No. Is it something I need to work on? Absolutely. Is it something I'm willing to work on? Yes. The next one is asking myself, do I find that I'm regularly multitasking? Yeah, this is definitely my thing. I find myself constantly doing more than one thing at a time. And even though I think I'm accomplishing a lot, it's possible that sometimes you find that you do none of them to your very best ability because you're trying to accomplish all of them at the same time. And if that's the case, are you really multitasking or just spreading yourself too thin? And when I'm asking you, I'm actually asking me. If you're at dinner with a friend, but then you're texting someone else, are you really multitasking? Because are you really paying attention, full attention while texting? If you're at your child's school play, but then you're talking to a buddy you haven't seen in a while, are you really multitasking? Because you can't pay attention to your child on stage, even though their role is just to be a flower on the stage, while being engaged with the conversation you're having with your friend. So are you really multitasking or sacrificing one for the other? And granted, there are some people who are really good at many things, and that makes them multi-talented, which is perfect. But all in all, and in the end, specialization is what works best for all of us. And not just for us, but for the people around us too. The next check-in. Do I have really good friends around me? And do I make sure that I check in with them? Social contact with people who know us and who understand us is one of the most relaxing and supportive things that we can do. As humans, we're wired to need comfort, we're wired to need contact, and we're also wired to need approval. Knowing this, it is my role, as I do my own wellness check-in, to make sure that I get all of these things. And how do I do that? By being with people who know me and who appreciate me for me. People who I can be myself with. Some people work on the notion that these people have to be your family. They don't have to be your family. They can be your chosen family. And by that I mean they could be your friends. My role as part of my self-check-in is to make sure that I'm nurturing these friendships. To make sure that I'm keeping them alive and to make sure that I am also doing the check-ins. They also need to be people who I know will be there through my good days and my bad days, not just my feel-good friends. Because if you have just feel-good friends, then those are not your people. They are your friends, but they're more of acquaintances. Your real people are the ones who know who you are 
when you're having a great time and when things are going great and also when you're really really struggling now this one is something that i will definitely have to do an own self inventory on to see how i'm doing especially now that we have curfews that keep us at home a lot more and it is how much time do i spend hanging out with my electronics Naturally, Netflix has become the thing, and it's okay to be able to have that in our lives, but what's the balance between how much time I spend on Netflix and how much time I spend with people instead? I read something where I'm being encouraged to take an electronics holiday. I've never had to do that. I don't know how to function without my electronics. It's worth a try. It'll be tough. I may cave. I may have moments of madness, but you know what? It's not such a bad idea in the end. All of us need downtime, that's a given. So my checklist or my check-in is I need to actually ask myself, do I really have a hobby? Can I claim that anything is my hobby? Do I read? Do I do a sport? I know that humans are designed to play. So I do need to find something that allows me to play and just have fun away from my normal routine. I also know that I don't have to aim for really big things. These could be just be small additions that I add to my day that add some source of pleasure, like stopping at my favorite ice cream or coffee place and picking up something that I love or taking time to just look outside or sit outside my house for a while and unplug. It could also simply be just appreciating that neighbor who always says hello to me all the time and always seems like they're in such a good mood. It simply means that I have to learn to take stock and to stop taking things for granted because there's so many things around us that we take for granted. The smiles we get from people, the smiles we give people, the kind things that we say to people. I just need to be more conscious of it and to just aim to do more. Last but not least, how grateful am I, really? I read that a sense of gratitude can boost my well-being and even alleviate any signs of depression. So at the end of the day, I'm going to try my best to do something new. And that something new is to find three things that I'm thankful for on that day. And I'm not going to make it a complicated large list. It could be something really basic, like I'm thankful for the roof over my head. It could also be something like I'm thankful for the fact that I have the ability to plug into my music and shut out the world and listen to all the sounds that I need to hear. Because we take something like being able to hear music for granted. By starting small, I'm hoping that I learn to Embrace how fortunate I really am. I'll have a way of seeing things in a positive light, even on days where I think that there's not much to be thankful for. Keep in mind that this list is not a comprehensive list of everything that you need to take stock of because everyone is different. And as I keep saying, not everyone is a template. But I found this list somewhere. And does it work for me right now? It does. Because to me, it's realistic. It's a few things that I can change right now and I don't have to go out and buy gadgets to be able to feel like I can achieve them. So it doesn't take me out of my way and I have no reason to procrastinate. And that's why this list works really well for me to take stock. There are people out there like me. It may be all of them for you or it may be two or three. But as long as you're doing some kind of self-reflection, as long as you're doing some kind of self-check-in, as long as you're doing some kind of self-therapy, because that's what this is, then you're learning and you're growing. And that's what really counts. I also know that by starting to consciously practice some of the behavior that I've talked about today, I may find that I am less stressed, less overwhelmed, feeling less burnt out, and feeling more ready to conquer 
whatever the world throws my way in the next month, in the next week, in the next hour, in the next minute. So what are you going to do to support yourself both physically and mentally? Feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to be kind because you really don't know what someone's going through. And to you, hugs and kindness. Always. Bye.